Welcome to our channel, we appreciate your presence and encourage you to subscribe for more insightful videos. Now, let's delve into the audacious escapade of a German tabloid TV journalist whose boldness took her all the way to the tranquil and posh enclave of Montecito. It appeared this journalist was on a mission, a quest if you will, to seek out the Sussexes, Prince Harry and Meghan, and anyone who might know them. A rather bold move, wouldn't you agree? Montecito, a quiet haven, known for its serene beauty and the discretion of its residents, was suddenly thrust into the limelight by this uninvited critic. She arrived with an agenda, a desire to pry into the lives of the Sussexes, to dig up whatever she could and to broadcast it to the world. She sought to invade their sanctuary, to disrupt their peace, and to thrust them back into the very glare they had left behind. Now one might expect such audacity from the British tabloids, whose relentless pursuit of the Sussexes is well known, but to witness it from a German tabloid TV journalist is indeed surprising. She was not deterred by borders or the privacy of the Sussexes. She came armed with a barrage of questions, demanding answers from the Sussexes and their acquaintances, but Montecito and its residents did not welcome this intrusion. They did not throw open their doors or spill their secrets. They stood firm, protecting their own, much like they have done in the face of British tabloid journalists who have tried similar tactics in the past. The uninvited critic found no open arms in Montecito. Instead, she found a community ready to protect their own, to preserve their sanctuary, and to defy the intrusive nature of the tabloids. She may have come seeking a story, but she left with a lesson in respect for privacy and the boundaries that should not be crossed. It appears that this journalist was not welcomed with open arms, much like the British tabloid journalists who have tried similar tactics in the past. Moving on to the meat of the matter, the glaring lack of substantial investigation in this documentary. From the outset, it's evident that the journalist spearheading this so-called documentary relies heavily on British tabloid reports rather than conducting any real investigative work. This approach, while perhaps convenient, is fundamentally flawed. British tabloids are notorious for their sensationalised narratives and intrusive tactics. They often prioritise scandal and shock value over the pursuit of truth, leading to a distorted representation of reality. Consider this specific scenario. The journalist barges into the tranquil enclave of Montecito, demanding to speak to the Sussexes and anyone who knows them. However, this approach is met with the same response as that given to the British tabloid journalists who try to stalk the Sussexes in California. Few people speak to her, and of course no one is going to open up their private foundation or accounts to her. The journalists' reliance on these tabloid reports in lieu of actual investigation is concerning. It's akin to navigating a ship using a map drawn by a child. It's not just misleading, but it also contributes to a culture of misinformation and speculation that does more harm than good. Moreover, the fact that these reports are used as the primary source of information indicates a concerning lack of depth in the research process. A well-rounded investigation would involve multiple sources, including interviews, public records, and perhaps even first-hand observations. But this documentary seems to lack all of these. This approach doesn't just undermine the credibility of the documentary, but it also raises questions about the integrity of the journalist and the motives behind the piece. Is it designed to inform and enlighten, or merely to entertain and provoke? The reliance on tabloid reports, the lack of substantial investigation, and the intrusive tactics used to gather information all point to one conclusion. This documentary is less a thorough exploration of the Sussex's life and more a tabloid piece, riding the wave of royal intrigue. It is clear that this documentary is more of a tabloid piece than an in-depth investigation. As we delve deeper, an alarming pattern starts to emerge. In the midst of all the hullabaloo, there is a foreboding sense of impending criticism directed towards the Invictus Games, a Paralympic-style sporting event created by Prince Harry himself for injured military personnel. The aim? To target Harry through these games. It's a chess move that's as transparent as it is deplorable. The Invictus Games, a beacon of hope and resilience for so many, are being exploited as a tool for scrutiny and criticism. It's a gross misdirection of energy that should be channeled towards celebrating the triumph of the human spirit that the games represent. Instead, they're being used as a pawn in a game of tabloid chess, 
with Harry and Meghan as the unwilling king and queen, and why? Because of their decision to value their privacy and lead a life away from the relentless glare of the media spotlight, a decision that should be respected, not punished. The Sussexes' move to Montecito, a quiet and ritzy enclave in California, was meant to provide them with the privacy they so desired and deserved. But it seems that even in this secluded corner of the world, their peace is under siege. From German tabloid TV journalists demanding to speak to anyone who knows Meghan and Harry, to British tabloid journalists trying to stalk the couple, the Sussexes are being hounded at every turn. The invasion of their privacy is not just unwarranted, it's downright disrespectful. This isn't investigative journalism. It's a violation, and it's a pattern that's becoming all too familiar for the Sussexes. We're witnessing an alarming trend where the Sussexes' right to privacy is being trampled on, their every move dissected under the harsh lens of media scrutiny. And for what? A sensational headline? A juicy scoop? This pattern of intrusive scrutiny seems to be the new norm for the Sussexes, a disturbing trend indeed. Now let's take a moment to talk about the need to protect the Sussexes. The importance of respecting the Sussexes' privacy cannot be overstated. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, like any other individuals, have the right to live their lives without being under the constant gaze of the public eye. Their decision to step back from royal duties was not taken lightly, and it was a move that they believe was necessary for their well-being and the well-being of their family. We must respect that. However, it's disheartening to see how the media, particularly the tabloids, have taken this as an invitation to scrutinise their every move. It's as if the Sussexes have become the favourite pastime for these outlets, with every action and decision being dissected and judged. This is not only disrespectful but also damaging. It creates an environment of hostility and judgement that no one should be subjected to, let alone a couple who have simply chosen to prioritise their mental health and family over royal duties. We also need to remember that the Sussexes are not just public figures, they are human beings. They experience emotions, they make mistakes, and they learn just like the rest of us. Yet they are expected to live up to an impossible standard, one that's often fueled by the media's relentless scrutiny. The media's attempts to target Harry through the Invictus Games, a project close to his heart, is another example of this unwarranted scrutiny. The Invictus Games are an international adaptive multi-sport event created by Prince Harry, in which wounded, injured or sick armed services personnel and their associated veterans take part in sports. It's a celebration of resilience and strength, not a platform for media criticism. We must stand against this intrusive and damaging behaviour. It's time to protect the Sussexes, to respect their privacy, and to allow them to live their lives as they see fit. After all, isn't that what we all want? The freedom to live our lives without judgement or intrusion. The Sussexes deserve to live their lives without the constant scrutiny of the media. As we come to the end of our discussion, let's summarise what we've covered. We began with the audacious intrusion of a German tabloid TV journalist into the tranquil haven of Montecito. This journalist, on a misguided mission, sought to pry into the lives of the Sussexes, expecting the residents to offer up their neighbours' private affairs. However, much like their British counterparts, their attempts were met with a unified wall of resistance. We then delved into the stark absence of genuine investigation in the documentary. Rather than conducting a thorough research or seeking authentic sources, the documentary relies heavily on the increasingly hysterical and intrusive reports from British tabloids. This is a stark reminder of the importance of responsible journalism, which respects the boundaries of personal privacy and seeks truth rather than sensationalism. We also observed an emerging pattern of criticism, particularly targeting Prince Harry and the Invictus Games. This is not just a critique of a single documentary, but a reflection of a broader issue. The Sussexes, like any other individuals, have a right to their privacy and should not be subjected to unwarranted scrutiny or criticism. In protecting the Sussexes, we're not just advocating for two individuals, we're standing for the principles of respect, privacy and responsible journalism. We're saying no to intrusion, no to sensationalism and yes to truth. In conclusion, the documentary, touted as an expose on lost Prince Harry, is nothing more than a compilation of tabloid reports lacking in authenticity and substance. It serves as a reminder of the need for responsible journalism and the importance of respecting the privacy of individuals. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Remember to subscribe, like and share our content. 
Let's continue to respect the privacy of the Sussexes and encourage more substantial investigative journalism.